All right, we're going to be taking on Demonic Library Curious, which is one of my favorite dungeons in the game, and we're going to be doing it with the Vicious Token, which will make all of the monster's stats higher. Because Demonic Library is already a very difficult dungeon, Vicious Token won't make the monsters upstairs that difficult, but in the basement ending of the game, it will make them much, much harder. So that's going to be the real trial. And as usual, I'm going to be Sorcerer with Avatar's Codex because I am addicted to this one build. It's just my favorite item. I could finish off that level 2 Gorgon, but I'm intentionally not doing so just yet. I don't have any way to spend mana whenever I want without killing a monster or killing myself. So I'd like the Gorgon to stay alive as long as possible to give me something I can fireball safely. Of course, now that I have Endus Wall, that's not an issue anymore. I can spend mana to my heart's content. Because of Curious, all the monsters here have Unstable, but Sorcerer with Avatar's Codex is very well suited to dealing with Unstable. So part of it is Unstable, of course, is this uh, effect from the Extreme Edition expansion that says whenever this monster dies, uh, you take damage equal to the health it had right before it died. So what you really want to do is finish off monsters when they're already very low on health. You don't want to get, like, an exact kill without 100 damage attack, because then you'd be taking 100 damage. Sorcerer with Codex is amazing at dealing with Unstable. First, Avatar's Codex gives monsters max stacks of burning, so you can get a monster down low and then pop the burning stack to kill them. I would say you take almost no damage that way, but I think if the burning stack pops from and kills them from you attacking another monster, you don't take any damage at all. I think Unstable will only happen if you actually attack that monster itself. I don't know the exact rules about that, come to think of it. Can this Pizor fling them into walls? Do you take Unstable damage from that? Let's oh, speak of the devil, if Pizor shows up as soon as I mention it. I don't know if it's based on adjacency, like a lot of things, like how whether a monster blinks is based on adjacency, but regardless. Uh, another great way of dealing with Unstable is Sorcerer's Mana Shield. When, source, when you fireball someone, Avatar's Codex says they retaliate, so they hit you. Then Sorcerer's Mana Shield says when they hit you, you hit them back for a little more damage. This counts as a separate instance of damage, so if you almost kill someone with the fireball, and then they hit you, and then they die to the mana shield, you only take a tiny bit of unstable damage from whatever the mana shield did. You don't take the full damage from what they had before you threw the fireball. So that's huge. And the third thing that makes this approach so good at dealing with unstable is uh, Essence Transit the sorcerer ability that gains you health whenever you spend mana. You, if your fireball kills a monster directly, then Essence Transit will apply before the unstable damage. So even if your health is lower than the monsters, you can still do it safely if Essence Transit would make your health higher. Thinking really hard there because I really, really like being efficient with my mana. Every point of mana I spend is piety for Mystera. If I level up with two mana left in my pool, that's two points of mana worth of Mystera piety I left on the table. Uh... Now there, when I killed that Gorgon, it said boom in red letters, which means you'll die to unstable. But I attacked and I was fine. The predictor doesn't know that Sorcerer's Essence Transit happens first. It thinks that Unstable Damage happens first. Here again, Red Boom. Now I could kill that thing safely, but I've made a mistake. I've gone down to zero piety, which means if I kill it, Mystera will be mad at me for killing a magic user, and she would apply her punishment, so I had to... Go explore a bit to undo that.
Earth Mother here is a fantastic find. Offers mana refills, able to entangle monsters for us, which prevents them from retaliating. Gonna punch that imp just to pop the gur burning stack and kill the gorgon. Or a succubus, I guess, in this dungeon. wasn't the best use I could have made from Fireheart. I probably could have gone after a level 7, maybe even a level 8 monster using it. And I think if I'd explored one tile and cast Endisfall, that would have then let me fireball for the kill, but so it goes. Luckily the curse stacks don't matter too much to us, because all we have defensively is a shield. If we can find a plate mail or a witch lock pendant or something like that, which we're really hoping to, then we'll care more about being cursed. With Vicious Token prepared, the bosses here all deal 120 damage with their attack, meaning we need at least 61 da health to survive. The retaliate, so we're just barely not capable of that yet. Which is fine, we're only level 5. I usually try to take on one of the bosses with the level 6 to 7 level up, I think. That's where it first becomes somewhat viable. It would be really nice to get one out of the way early because because that would be worth a ton of experience, and it also gives you the gold to buy whatever you need. Alright, now the boom. Oh, it is showing green, never mind. Thought it might be showing red there. The red boom thing comes up quite a few times in this run. It happened in when we're dealing with the cultists that became that level 6 zombie we were fighting. So knowing that particular quirk of how the predictor reads Essence Transit is very important for taking on this place. And it's only one trait that only appears rarely, and it only interacts that way with one class, so it's about as harmless as a predictor error could get, and it will never accidentally kill you. It will never say next hit safe or green boom or whatever, or win. There, there it was again, we won on a red boom. It will never tell you you're going to survive when in fact you're going to die. At worst, if you're at full health, it might show you staying at full health when, in fact, you're going to go down a bit below full health because the game's expecting you to take damage and then heal with Essence Transit, when what really happens is you heal with Essence Transit, the healing is wasted because you're already maxed out, and then you take damage. But that's pretty harmless. Piercing Wand, thank you. Fantastic find. The Underground is the hardest part of this run because the boss down there uh, gets much more out of the Vicious Token than the Upstairs does. And the Piercing Wand is what we really, really want to deal with the boss, because the boss has 75% magic resist, and with only 25% physical resist, is Price has enough health that it's sort of assuming you're going to be killing it with physical attacks. But physical attacks aren't really our thing. And this wall is kind of doubly useful in combat. It's a way of spending mana without taking damage, which is good for our essence transit, and it also gives us that physical resistance. So, it kind of helps us twice. Alright. 
One boss down, four to go. This looks like a secret sub-dungeon. Oh, Piety Sparkle sub-dungeon. That's quite nice. A lot of this possible secret sub-dungeons we wouldn't really have any use for at this stage. Like, the one that's full of gold, we're getting tons of gold from the five bosses anyhow. Not to mention our Gloves of Midas, which are already overkill in terms of gold. Uh, the one with Good Glenric, we're already higher level than Good Glenric, so that wouldn't be that good. The Blacksmith, we could convert the gear for another mana potion, but I think the Piety is about as good as we could hope for. The one with a bunch of popcorn monsters could be nice too, just because those popcorn monsters don't uh, have unstable, unlike the upstairs monsters. I'm fighting this profane flesh just after I bought boons from Mystera, because I would much rather lose a little more HP from its corrupting aura than lose a ton of piety. Most of the time I avoid profane flesh because I don't really want to bankrupt myself piety-wise, but if I'm already down in the single digits, it can be very worth it. Getting close to a level up, I uh, killed that imp just to get myself a little closer so that I can easily level up mid-fight against another boss. That mana booster is probably worth it. With two Mystera mana buffs, you naturally cap out at 20 only when you get all three of the mana boosters. And with Smuggler's Den, that's a bit inconvenient because one of them is down in Smuggler's Den and I don't really want to explore the Smuggler's Den. It's a low priority area to explore. Upstairs, there's monsters to find that are worth killing and stuff. Downstairs, we're never going to find a worthy opponent down there or a glyph that will really help us so it's kind of the last place i want to explore so that is one drawback of prepping smoker's den you do fall a little bit behind in terms of mana wise but not capping out at 20 until much later than you normally would i still think it's very worth it though because we are very starved for darkness in this dungeon, and every little helps. And so we certainly don't need to prep more value in the gold piles when we are being showered with gold from the various bosses. So that's two bosses down, but we're mostly out of darkness, which doesn't bode super well. Hopefully we'll still be able to pull this off. It looks like we'll have to fight another boss without a level without help from a mid-fight level up. Just right now. The question is just which one? None of the three remaining ones are very nice. This one's the least bad because it only applies poison. The one with mana burn and death gaze is really nasty to us, and curse bearer isn't great either. And the last one has high magic resistance and corrosion, which really sucks for us. I mean, we don't care about the corrosion that much, but nobody actually likes corrosion, so still worse than other ones. So far we took down the one with, with physical resistance and weakening blow, neither of which we care about since we never punch anything, and the one with retaliate fireball, which, considering Avatar's Codex makes everyone have retaliate fireball, we definitely didn't care about. Picked up a temporary Viper Ward to help with uh, dealing with this poison inflicting boss. We're not going to keep it forever. In fact, this is the, really the last poisoner in the dungeon, except I guess maybe a couple low level thralls. But we, we're going to get rid of that Gloves of Mine sooner or later, anyhow. It doesn't really do anything to help us. It's just better than an empty slot. And Viper Ward, we've certainly got the money to buy it for just this one fight. And. It's got a very good conversion value, too. 
I'm going to use a potion there to help finish this fight off. Alright, two to go. Both of which are quite nasty. And the trick is going to be that we have the Earth Mother's help. Without her, taking on the one with Mana Burn and Death Gaze would be a huge pain. With Earth Mother to slow that boss so it can't attack, we'll be in good shape. So if we pick up this amulet, it will summon a level 1 thrall and a level 9 thrall in that sub dungeon. The level 1 we can't really make that good use of, and the level 9 we can't take on at all because of its mountain of uh, debuffs that it applies. So just converting the amulet for, pi for conversion value seems more useful. Taking on a monster that's the same level as me feels really bad, to be honest. I'm just trying to get close to a level up. Because the next boss we're going to take on is the one with high magic resist, which and the magic resist means a lot of fireballs are going to be needed, and when you need a lot of fireballs, a level up definitely helps in terms of getting the mana for that. Piper Ward has outlived its usefulness as we knew it would. The piercing wand we definitely want for the final boss, but it's not that helpful before then. Even the upstairs boss with decent magic resist, it might save us one fireball. But it's a fairly marginal effect, so we don't want to pick it up until we're ready to head downstairs for the final gauntlet. would have been worth picking up a stone sigil earlier. Normally it's not the most efficient item, but it's in this place we don't care about gold efficiency at all, and in the long run it would be worth quite a lot. Certainly more valuable than the gloves of Midas were. We're going to buy out all of the shops now and convert their stuff so that we can pick up the piercing wand without worrying about inventory space later. It's a small benefit, but every little helps. Using Fireheart for just plus 5% HP would have been enough there. I think that was the correct play, not using one of my Glyph conversions. But I don't think it really matters. We can't explore back up to full before the next boss fight anyhow, because there's just not enough darkness accessible. So we were going to end up needing to do one of those conversions regardless. And it's probably best to get our conversion value in now before we... Uh, convert away from Mystera to Earth Mother, because once we convert out of Mystera, the value of that, uh, of her refreshment boon is going to be halved. And Earth Mother's going to be mandatory here, because she can slow this last boss. 
And without that, we would have no way of hitting him without being mana burned and being incredibly sad. Mystera kind of outlived her usefulness anyhow, and the ability to regain mana is going to help us so much in the last phase of the run that we wanted to be an Earth Mother at this stage anyhow, even if we weren't required to. Just clearing the curse stack. Wait. There is a terrifying gauntlet of monsters here. We're going to go around it. Uh, plants have actually made this place difficult to navigate. The correct thing to do is probably just ask Earth Mother to remove ten of them at random. But Instead, I'm going to be opening up this wall here. Which is not quite ideal, but... So the way dungeon difficulty works is all the dungeons have like some difficulty mod modifier that multiplies all the monster's stats. Demonic Library, it's like 140%, I believe. So the monsters here are 40% more attack and health than they would be in Den of Danger. Uh, Vicious Token overwrites the dungeon's normal modifier and replaces it with 160% attack, 200% health, I believe. But the thing is that this downstairs area of Demonic Library does not have the upstairs portion's modifier of 140%. Its base is only 100%, but the Vicious Token still sets it to 160-200. What that means is that while the upstairs monsters only got maybe 50% more XP, more HP than they had before, everyone downstairs has their health doubled, and their attack increased far more drastically than upstairs. So because of that, that wall of question marks from monsters is absolutely terrifying. And the final boss has 2,000 health instead of 1. So the avatar is going to be a huge pain even now that we've been able to use Endeswall to sort of cheat our way around the guards. The question mark guard next to the avatar uh, is someone I can kill in two fireballs. So my plan here is to get into a position where I can uh, kill him for a mid-fight level up once I start fighting the avatar. It has to be the one next to the avatar because otherwise I won't be able to get to him after I hit the avatar the first time. That tunnel I dug will be filled with question mark guards. I don't know if they have a real name or anything. We're taking vine forms because they're the only thing that we can take with us into the final boss. And we're also using Earth Mother to help max us out because again, we're losing access to her once the fight starts. And I've gotten burned far too many times on cutting myself off from vital resources by starting the avatar fight and then afterwards realizing, oh no, there was something I meant to do. So I'm being very careful here to make sure there's not anything I'm forgetting to do. There was no benefit whatsoever to killing off those thralls. Well, that's not necessarily true. So that level four thrall up in the top left that's dizzy, its health is very slightly higher than the damage our fireball deals, which means it will die to burning stacks afterward. So one of the options I'm considering is fireballing that thrall 
And then my very first attack on the avatar will pop the Bernie stack and level me up. Which might be... which is worth considering compared to just killing the guard next to the avatar, because the guard next to the avatar takes a couple fireballs to kill and hits back pretty hard, so it's not clear I'd be able to kill that guard if I'm also using Can of Wupaz, which I really want to use on the avatar since that thing has 2,000 health and high resists. These random walls that I'm breaking, I should probably be breaking down in the basement instead. Since there, they could open up a little more darkness. So that's a bit of a uh, misplay to avoid in future. really trying to like find a way to make this thrall thing work, but ultimately I'd like to get more than one attack in at level 9, and the burning stack pop approach means I'll be able to take exactly one action before I level up, and that just doesn't feel like enough. Now I'm breaking walls where I should be, getting a little more darkness so I can cap out my health before we start the fight. Breaking this wall explores me three tiles. Misplay there, I should have taken another boon to spawn one more plant so that there would be 10 so I would get full value from the Earth Mother removing up to 10 plants. A lot of little places here where there's room for improvement. Now that Wupaz isn't in my inventory because I'm about to start the fight, I can buy and drink this burn salve. enough killing that monster instantly spawned another one in its place because killing it also popped the burning stack on the avatar. Doesn't actually matter, it's just funny. This thing has a ton of health, but at least from grinding down its magic resist early, but slowly but surely. It started at 75%, it's now down to 50%. But other things that have been ground down include our health resources. We can no longer survive any retaliations from the Avatar. And that means that it's time to say goodbye to our faithful Avatar's Codex. We're going to have to do the rest ourselves without its help. Luckily, it's already given us max burning stacks on the avatar, and we have a huge stack of mana potions from being a gnome. I could punch the avatar, but I'm avoiding- I don't want to lose my 20 burning stacks. It's now completely out of magic resist, and we win! 2000 health, 75% magic resist, and we made it through. And we even got an avatar's code next to replace the one we just lost, so... It's never truly gone. So, very successful run. Curious on a, on a vicious dungeon with the vicious token prep to make it even harder. This was very difficult, but also I honestly didn't take me more than a few tries. Trying to do Curious and Scrooge together, I found was much, 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 much harder. But 
Honestly, I struggle with Den of Danger with Vicious Tokens, so I'm extremely pleased this worked out.